We brought the panel together to debate the issue of transparency and openness in British politics and business. Didn't the banking scandal show um, that transparency and openness, it, it's not just a nice to have, it's a must have? No, I, actually I don't buy that. I, I, I would say that the problem with banks was cultural. Um, that the, the bank's culture was rotten. Why do good people do bad things? And that, because it's those bad things which sink companies. So I think that transparency has a role, but only if the product is right that you're being transparent about. By all means, disclose and be open, but only if you have an embedded culture which can stand the examination. And the banks didn't. And what role does transparency and openness have to play within the modern corporation? Well, it's essential and it's important to note that we've been on a journey for the last 20 years, to my personal knowledge, in opening up organisations, whether they be official government agencies, government departments and companies, through legislation, also through the way things are now done, with voluntary disclosure on environmental impacts and what have you. And I think as time goes on, you know, we realise that actually more and more information should be in the public domain that isn't in the public domain. And we do have to continue with this fight to get stuff out there. There are limits to this, but in many cases we're not at the limits yet as we keep discovering as another scandal breaks and another corporation is exposed doing something that people think they shouldn't have been doing. By being more transparent, you're managing risk better in the sense of, you know, you, you, you basically have control of the story up to a point in so far as you've said it first. Now when it comes to politicians, I think we're talking about a rather different approach. I mean, Tony Blair, for example, says in his memoirs that in his view, the biggest mistake he made was introducing the Freedom of Information Act. You know, most of us in the media, as you know, are very concerned about the uh, plans to introduce statutory regulation of the press, because again, uh, we think uh, that that would cut back on our ability to reveal things, and while if you look at the series of big stories which we've had recently, again, all from the digital world, I mean, MPs' expenses. And of course, at the root of that scandal was a lack of clarity that MPs did not want to admit to the public how much they were being paid. The vast majority of people that we, we spoke to held the person at the top accountable and that it was that person's responsibility to make sure that they were transparent and open and that they can't claim to know uh, that there was something uh, bad going on in the business that they didn't know about. I agree there's no excuse, but I, I would say it's completely unrealistic. I, th I think that in a small business uh, and a new business with a common culture and perhaps a few hundred employees the chief executive can know, when you get into a big modern organisation it's quite impossible. More chief executives will no doubt get their heads chopped off as a consequence of exposures, but I think one is putting the unrealistic demand on them. But if you have a CEO who runs away, as the banking CEOs did after the banking crisis, in the end it ends up being much worse.